We are visiting today a 34 meter steel hull catch gullet that was built in 2007 in Turkey. The boat is registered uh, with commercial registration in Malta. She has Rina class. Now she's offered for sale from her second owner. I actually sold this boat to the present owner five years ago and since then many uh, upgrades and improvement has been done on the boat. Uh, I'm going to point out all these improvements and uh, show the boat as she is now. Now this video is going to be very long so if you want to skip from one part of the video to the other use the chapters at the video description below. You will also find a link to the web page of the boat where you will find many photos, full specification list, general arrangement and additional information. Let's start the video. So we are starting the video today from the, the very tip of the bow, the bowsprit. Uh, it's about four or five meters long. Uh, the overall length of the boat is 34 meter. It's not including the bowsprit. Uh, there are two uh, head sails here. One here behind me, which is the largest one. And this one, and they are controlled by Harkan hydraulic furlers. Uh, important fact is that the sails of the boat is one years old. They have been made by UK sail. Uh, amazing advantage. Uh, also the forestry that you can start to see some of it with uh, this Bimini here or this Owing here and uh, the seating places is totally new. So here we are uh, in between the windlasses from Data. Uh, each windlass like this is connected to 180 meter chain. There are two of them, one here and one here. Uh, the chain is massive, it's 20 millimeter uh, chain. Now this hatch will lead to the crew accommodation. I'm going to put a full tour in the crew accommodation at the end of this video. As I said before, this video is going to be very long and if you want to skip from one part of the video to the other, uh, I'll put chapters at the video description below so you can uh, go there, click it and jump to the area that you are most interested. Beautiful sitting area here at the front um, while the boat is cruising or anchoring. You can always enjoy such nature view when you're sitting in this place. The boat has amazing um, vast area of uh, sunbathing as you can already see. Some of it now is occupied by uh, this uh, jet ski from Sido. It's a new machine, one year old. And some sunbathing area down here. Let's have a quick look at the rigging and the condition of it. It's two aluminium mast. The total sail, sail, sails area of the boat is uh, 630 square meters and in 25 uh, knots of uh, wind speed this boat will cruise six, seven knots uh, if she's running with beam reach or broad reach. Now we will uh, proceed down actually from here because I want to show you the uh, <coughs> the water uh, ladders. There is amazing varnishing uh, work on the boat. You can see it everywhere starting from here and there are 63 varnishing layers here. Quite unbelievable. Windows has been uh, replaced three years ago with a special UV tinting. 
you can see all the connections the boat is in superb condition and very very well maintained now here is the here is one uh, of the uh, swimming stairs access to the water there is identical on the other side deck shower is hidden here moving astern and here there is a small uh, gate to limit the access if there are children it can be locked in this area, in this position, and limit the area where the uh, guests, especially children, can visit. Now, here we are in the aft deck. It's quite an astonishing aft deck. The boat, uh, the beam of the boat is eight meter. So it's, it's, it's huge even uh, for similar uh, motor boats at the same length or even bigger. Uh, this chair, Oh, this table that you can see here in the center will sit comfortably uh, 10 guests and here at the stern we can see very large beautiful sunbathing area now the whole area is protected with a huge sun owing as you can see here The stairs just in front of the camera has been added two years ago. Before that, it was a small sitting area, and that was a very clever idea because that actually connects the aft deck with uh, the, the roof of the, co the coach roof. So it creates a kind of a flybridge, if you want to call it like this, though it's not a real flybridge, but it's a huge uh, additional. Uh, surface which you can enjoy now the boom of the mainsail this one can be lifted up um, and then a larger table can be can be opened here or a larger space and it's a beautiful area to sit here uh, having your wine or coffee or whatever and watch the view around with uh, nearly no disturbance So we are going back to the stern. Another good chance to see this huge aft deck from a different angle, slightly different angle. And we will go to the helm station. There is another internal helm station and let's quickly see what we can see here in terms of uh, visibility and instruments. So basically, when the captain sits on this seat, he can see all around. Uh, imagine that the chairs are disappearing when the boat is navigating, so the whole view is open for him. There are three screens from uh, Raymarine, Hypertouch, New, they are uh, one. Some of them. One of them is one year old. The other one is. T the other two are two years old, uh, with a new Axiom uh, software from Raymarine. And uh, there are th four new uh, multi displays from Raymarine. Uh, even the analog uh, gouges here for the main engines are new. And here on the. On the right side, there are another two big screens from Raymarine, which are brand new, just been installed. And they can basically display anything which is displayed on the larger screens. Of course, the throttles and the bow thruster and stern thruster and a VHF from ICOM here on the left hand side. So everything the captain needs in order to navigate the boat safely is from here. Sail operation is done uh, uh, hydraulically and electrically, but it needs uh, 
it needs the crew uh, hands in order to hoist it around the winches. Um, yeah. So that was the helm station. Turning back to the stern. And from here, let's have a quick walk to the back. Under these uh, round cushions, there, are, there is a jacuzzi. We are not going to open it today, but it is here if somebody is interested. And then there is a very long passerelle of seven meter and the dinghy of the boat is here. I will provide information in the web page about the length of it and the type of engine which is connected here to this dinghy. And of course it's uh, electrical davits so the dinghy can be launched from here quite easy. One of the crew members is taking it to one of the sides and from there it's very easy to board the dinghy. Um, so we are proceeding forward. This is another uh, good chance to see this uh, aft deck from a different angle facing forward. This huge Owing above us, providing a lot of shade and protection from the sun. And we are moving to see the interior. Now, uh, the varnishing outside is shiny uh, because this is the most uh, um, resistible uh, varnish to sunlight shiny varnish but inside it's a different story you will find a matte um, varnish as you can see here this is the preference of the present owner um, let's go and explore more deeply so here we are in the main salon of the boat sitting area here on the starboard side bar at the back we were going to approach it closely soon dining table and a large tv screen quick look at the ceiling with this off-white design and we are starting moving forward let's check first the helm station here the interior helm station some working surfaces for the captain, kind of a small office, navigation table that will match uh, large paper maps, though they are rarely in use, and some screens, which is C140 from Raymarine. Uh, the steering here is electrically with this small joystick. This is the way to navigate the boat. Uh, mostly this station is not, where, is not uh, used for navigation, only in long passages when the weather is bad. So, and of course the, the area is pretty clear, so the captain can navigate the boat from here, uh, mainly for long passages. Two VHF machines down here, JRC, and another one from ICOM. Some portable VHF radios, laptops. And let's explore the other side, the opposite side, the port side. Now down here below, it's the way to the galley and the engine room, which we are going to visit later. And here, there is a nice bar, few tables, uh, sorry, few chairs uh, here that you can sit on the bar and behind a full station for service, fridges, for beverages, uh, ice maker down here, sink, working surfaces, espresso machine, Turkish coffee machine, and some beverages behind. Underneath here, storage space. And let's proceed to the forward guest cabins. 
this is the way. So there are four stairs. We're going down. And let's start with the starboard guest cabin, which is this one. This cabin is the only one which is painted off-white. And to me, it's quite nice. It gives a little bit more uh, feeling that the cabin is lit in. Now, a personal preference of uh, the present owner is to have hidden lights. I mean, like that, it's not the, the direct a LED light and that uh, seems to be um, giving a different way of lighting the boat. It's very intimate. Some people will uh, consider that as not enough light. Uh, this can be changed quite easily by changing the, the light elements. Uh, you will see it on the other cabins where the walls are painted the, the wooden uh, color which feels to some people some uh, too dark. But this, as, as I said before, can be improved uh, with different uh, light elements. So this is the ensuite of this cabin. Very large and comfortable shower uh, with some uh, red marble on the walls, sink and toilet down here. And we are coming back to the cabin. Another good option to see this cabin from a little bit different angle. The ceiling is also quite interesting with this fabric. And we are going out from this cabin, starboard cabin, crossing the corridor. This is the way to the salon back. We are crossing into the port side cabin and now you can see uh, the different design in terms of the paint of the wall, which is classic wooden varnished. And the varnish inside, as I mentioned before, it's all matte, not shiny. It gives very classy look. Now this cabin has also an ensuite identical size to the other one that we just saw. Different color of shading, uh, it's plated with the off-white marble, same for the sink. Back to the cabin. And we are out from this cabin, back to the corridor stairs up and here we are back into the salon space bar helm station moving astern again the dining table and sitting area, quite large windows. They are all shaded with this uh, bamboo style, uh, which is manually operated. Let me get close to one of them. This is the design. I asked to open it in order to, to give additional uh, light into the salon. Now the, the boat uh, has a music system, um, cameras, and from here we will go to see the, um, the stern cabins, and this is the corridor. feels a little bit dark in this hour of the day. We will start from the port side guest cabin, which is a twin cabin. 
beautiful cabin. As I said, uh, light can be quite easily improved if someone feels that uh, this is too dark for him or for her. <coughs> en suite. The boat is beautifully maintained, clean, um, very, very high attention to s small details. Back to the cabin. Crossing the corridor. And we are in another cabin, which is fairly large and described as a VIP cabin. It's actually the largest cabin uh, aside from the master cabin, which we are going to see soon. Beautiful choice of fabrics and colors. Again, this uh, beachcomber style ceiling. Sitting area. Dressing corner. And of course, the attached the en suite. Again, with this uh, reddish marble here, and same for the for the shower, which has very generous size and some teak flooring. Back to the cabin. Another quick look from this angle. And we are going out to the corridor and from here we will go to explore the last cabin which is the master cabin. Where at the moment, uh, what we see from the window is the dinghy, which is blocking the light slightly. But still, this is a huge cabin. It's a full beam cabin with the windows facing uh, to the stern. Now this cabin has two bathrooms for him and for her. The first one here is on the starboard side. It has a bath. With some reddish marble um, all around. Toilet and sink. Very spacious. Back to the cabin. Then again, if one uh, prefer the light system can improve, this is a personal preference of the present owner to have uh, this kind of uh, light elements which you don't see the actual lid um, directly. Now, this is the second bathroom and this one has a shower. So you have a choice, either you can use a shower or you can take a bath or take a shower in the bath. All the options are here. As I said before, everything is super clean, super tidy, attention to details, odorless. Now let me remind you that if you want to skip from one part of the video to the other, use the chapters at the video description below. You will also find a link to the web page and by clicking it you will uh, see the photos and the full specification list and additional information about the boat. So here we are back into the salon 
and our last station today is going to be the galley and the engine room and as I said in the beginning I'm going to put the clip of the crew area just at the end of uh, this video so we are moving forward again turning here left to the port side and just behind this door we will find the galley and the engine room So we are going to see a lot of uh, refrigerated spaces here, starting from these three doors. And electrical panels. These electrical panels has been um, renewed and upgraded. Uh, switches has been uh, replaced recently. Some additional gouges has been added. Here on the on the left side, there are addi additional uh, fridge. Here at the top, it's a uh, quite deep fridge. And underneath, there is a deep freezer, also quite deep. So bear in mind, you have uh, ten guests on board, seven crew, all in all, seventeen people. That has to be fed uh, during a, a cruise of one or two weeks you need to store a lot of food and the space is here additional uh, fridge are here fridges are here so this is the galley it's a good size galley uh, we have a deep sink here uh, from stainless steel commercial uh, dishwasher with very short cycle it's a five minute cycle and the dish uh, the dishes are clean it's a very st very fast one um, some uh, additional uh, storage spaces up here induction stove and oven from Siemens down here on the other side a lot of uh, storage areas for dry food microwave and as we saw before uh, a fridge large fridge and freezer and what we see here is a small seating area for the crew uh, this is the pantry they can sit here uh, if someone is on watch uh, during anchorage or during um, uh, or inside the marina he can watch the uh, camera areas even one of the cameras are shooting me while I'm while I'm shooting so anyway it's a it's a comfortable uh, resting area for the crew uh, another look to the galley from this angle and we will proceed to visit the engine room I asked the crew to shut down the generators so you can hear me clearly the door is already open uh, it's a watertight door of course and we are crossing it and going inside the engine room so let's have a quick look around before i jump into the details now in the heart of this engine room there are two man engines with uh, 440 horsepower each uh, at the moment uh, one of them has 7,000 hours the other one has been overhauled uh, 1,000 hours ago deep overall including changing the the liners the sleeves um, and the pistons and everything so uh, now it has um, 1,000 running hours this is the that one the port side there are two generators here from uh, Cummins Onan, uh, each one uh, with 50 kilowatts and approximately 13,000 working hours. The diesel machinery, the engines and the generators are working uh, uh, in very good order, no problems, no smoke, uh, full power, so they can still keep on. Uh, the generators probably will need in one point overall, but uh, there is no, no issue at the moment. Let's uh, have a look at additional uh, machinery on board. Let's start from the 
uh, starboard side, uh, there is a very uh, large uh, water maker system uh, from Alpha. It's a, um, it is custom um, custom unit. Uh, now this uh, system can produce 1,500 liters per hour, so it's a huge amount. Uh, the boat uh, water tanks has 3,500 liters, but so this system can uh, refill them in two hours. So two uh, high pressure pumps down here. Um, inside here we can see the membranes and a compre air compressor. And in order not to load the generator while these two high pressure pump uh, uh, pumps are starting, which are uh, consuming a large current when starting, there, there is two uh, electrical units, these green ones, which are gradually uh, increasing the speed of the engines. Uh, close by look at one of the main engines. Uh, they are dry, clean, no drips, uh, painted and in very good condition. We can also see some parts of the bilge here, uh, which is painted, no rust, the boat is still hull. Uh, there are two PTOs, the units which are providing the hydraulic power to the various system of the boat. One of them is here, the other one uh, is installed on the other engine, and there is also a backup with the electrical engine. Now, the boat has 15,000 liters of fuel, and in uh, cruising speed, she will go approximately 2,300 uh, nautical miles uh, range. This includes a kind of a 10% uh, backup. Um, so this is, this is a real number. Let's go to the other side of the engine room, the port side, closely. Um, now, uh, there is a big boiler here for heating water for the showers and the galley. 150 liters. Additional two boilers are uh, stored in the bilges in the front and in the aft as a backup, each one of them with another 90 liters. This is the main uh, hydraulic system of the boat. It provides power for the bow thruster, aft thruster, uh, winches, and so on. Down here we can see uh, water pumps which are providing pressure to the showers, the galley, etc. One is 24 volts, so the system can run without generators, and the other one is 220 volts. Um, this area, uh, we, are, we look at uh, air the air conditioning system of the boat, three units, and that's about it. Now, uh, two new chargers from Vitron Quattro to a uh, large uh, system and just behind the engine room door there are two uh, large inverters from Vitron which provide a 220 volts uh, converted from the 24 volts batteries uh, in order to provide the different systems while, while the uh, generators are not working. Let's look at the engine room. And summary, the engine room is uh, very comfortable. Uh, and by saying that, I mean that it's very accessible. You can go to the engine from any side. You can detect uh, leakages, uh, problems, anything very quickly. On the other side, it's not too large, so it's not wasting uh, space uh, on the account of the cabins. Uh, it's very well maintained, um, yeah. So that was uh, that was uh, the video of uh, voyage. We will step back to the main deck and quickly outside. And I'm going to add uh, the last part of this video, the crew area, if you're interested to see. And here we are in an anchorage place in South Turkey. It's the beginning of the summer. Um, if you want to learn more about the boat, visit her webpage by using the link at the video description below.
and feel free to contact me for any additional question or information that you require. So now it's the time to see the crew area. We will go through this hatch which is located in between the two windlasses on the foredeck. Going down six or seven stairs down below deck. Here we are. There's a small corridor. All in all, these cabins, uh, this area has four cabins, three for the crew and one for the captain. We'll start from this uh, starboard side, two banks. Everything is clean, well painted. Identical cabin on the other side, on the port side, with two banks, carpet on the floor, TV screen up there, and we proceed inside. Now this corridor is also used as a washing machine station or laundry station. There are two commercial washing machines from Siemens and two dryers also from Siemens. They are two years old, quite new. Another crew cabin here, slightly bigger two banks, some storage spaces for personal belongings, and on the opposite side it is the captain's cabin with a white bed and some screens. This will screen the security cameras and Raymarine a uh, plotter with all the options and here another uh, indicator so the captain can monitor most of the navigational characters uh, from his cabin. Back into the corridor down below here huge storage space big tow line uh, access to the bow thruster and place to store everything this boat needs for a normal operation. Now there are two uh, bathrooms here uh, with the full-size shower, toilet, sink. Uh, these are being shared among all the crew uh, members. One here and one here. Clean, well-maintained, odorless, very nice. So here is another view, just from uh, inside out. And that was the, the crew area. Additional uh, access to the bilge. And actually this is the bow thruster. Uh, the bow thruster has been uh, totally renewed last year. As you can see, new pipes. The motor has been uh, serviced. Uh, easy access for maintaining. And here we go, up again. We are just approaching uh, Anchorage place.